So in this video we will attempt to look at more circle and solve a FE type question by graphically determining the two non-zero principal stresses. So if we read the question we're told a state of plane stress at a point is using more circle as shown by the figure below. Using the more circle the two non-zero principal stresses are most nearly what? So these are our answers here. So this is one principle, this is the other principle stress, and we want to determine which option it is based on the given conditions for a state of plane stress. So what do we mean by a state of plane stress at a point? So let's say this might mean that, let's say we have a shaft or a rod or whatever it may be, and we're looking at a point in space and what we specifically do is cut out an element here. We're looking just at some point and we're assuming this rod or specimen is loaded actually and let's say we also have some torsion, right? We apply a torque. So this we can take out an element here at a specific point on this specimen. We look at this element and we know we're going to have some stresses in the x, some stresses in the y, I'm assuming positive for all of these, and we're going to have some, also some shear, right, due to the torsion. So we're going to have some shear as well. So that's what we have for this example. So that's what we're essentially looking at, and this is the state of plane stress. So this state has been already graphed on the Morse circle. It's graphed by these points, point A and B. So we know here that it's graphed at A and B, and we know that the first portion, essentially the x-coordinate, is going to be our sigma x. This is our shear. This is sigma y. This is our shear. And we know this is in the FE handbook, so let's refer to the handbook here. I'm in the mechanics and materials section, and this is on page 133. Here they show us the element, right? In the x, it's sigma x. In the y, it's sigma y. And we know here the away is going to be positive. So positive for both sigma x and sigma y. If it was inwards, it would be negative. So if we go down to the actual circle, we know the more circle in 2D look, should look something like this. So we know sigma x is going to be this coordinate, right? So the bottom coordinate, this is tau xy. And we know what's important here is tau xy is on the counterclockwise axis. So we're ass assuming that any rotation counterclockwise is essentially down here, right? So it's going to be below the zero line. So it's like counterintuitive, but just always assume counterclockwise is going to be below the zero, zero line. And we're going to say clockwise is essentially negative above the zero line, a clockwise rotation. So if this tau xy, we know it's going to be clockwise. It's a clockwise rotation. This tau xy, since it's below this line, it's going to be counterclockwise. And we know this is sigma y. This is sigma y, this is tau xy clockwise. This is sigma x, this is tau xy counterclockwise. So we know also know that tau n, the maximum in-plane shear stress, is just the radius of the circle, which we can find as well. And we'll do that. So I'm going to focus on finding the two non-zero principal stresses, and we're going to use these equations. We're going to find these graphically, but you can also find these using calculations, right? If you know sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, you can just find these real quick using this, which you can do as well. So we know for this example, I'll focus on finding these graphically, but before that, we know we need the center, which is essentially the average. So it's the average of sigma x and sigma y, and we divide by 2. Like we have this line, right? This is sigma x, sigma y. This whole line, we just divide it in half, and we get the center. That's why it's the average there. It's just the center of the circle. And the radius can be arrived at by this, and we'll do that graphically as well. But let's focus on using these equations. We take the center plus the radius to find our sigma a, and we take the center minus the radius to find sigma b. These are the two non-zero principal stresses. So let's go back to our notebook here. 
we know what we should do first is write these equations. So I'll do my solution on the right side here. So the first step in we know that graphically sigma a is going to equal to the center plus the radius and we know that sigma b is going to equal to the center minus the radius. So let's find the center first. What's nice about this question is they give us the center. So the center is provided to, to be at negative 11.5 comma 0, meaning 0 is here and the center is going to go negative 11.5 in the x but it's zero in the y, right? We're strictly looking along the x direction. It's negative 11.5 comma zero. So that's the center. So this is known. Now the tricky part is finding the radius. And I'm going to find this radius graphically. So the way we can find the radius, I'm going to label it on our Morse circle as this. This is our radius. And we know it's going to go all the way to the center, right? This is the, our radius. It's the same as this radius, right? So they're the same. So R there is equal to the same R. So we have that radius. And what we need to do is essentially use the Pythagorean theorem to find R. So what I'm going to do is tell you that we have to label this distance as X. I'll just call it X. And we have to label this distance here as y for this triangle. So I'm going to use this triangle. We have the base, we have the height, and we can solve for r using using the Pythagorean theorem. But before that, let's find x and y. So step number two is to find x and y. So x will be what? What we're going to do is look at this graphically that in order to get this x distance, you have to get this distance strictly this distance right and to find that distance what i have to do is we know this total distance here is what that negative 48 right so i have to take this total distance of essentially a 48 or negative 48 and subtract what distance i have to subtract it from this distance which is negative 11.5 so to find x, we have to take, once again, this whole distance, which is the 48, it's the x-coordinate at b. This distance is 48, right, from the center, from the origin of the circle, from the origin of our coordinate space, sorry, from the origin of the coordinate space. So it's 0, 0. This distance is going to be 48, negative 48, and we have to subtract that from this distance, which will give us our x value. So let's do that. So x is going to equal what? x would equal to that 48. So that 48 distance, I'm going to just write 48. It's going to be this distance here. That entire distance. This one. And we're going to subtract it from this distance, which is going to be the 11.5. So I have to take 48 minus 11.5. And that will give me the x value, and you should get around 36.5. That's the x value. Now, that was the hard part. The y value is a lot easier to find graphically based on the circle. The y value is this horizontal distance. So it's just this distance, right? It's just this distance, which is just 18. So just keep it as 18 for y. Or you can keep the negative. But obviously, it's just 18, right? So y is going to be 18. So now we can find r, right? Because we have x, we have y. x is 36.5, y is 18. We can find r. It's the Pythagorean theorem. So r, the hypotenuse, is going to equal to the square root of what? The x value squared plus the y value squared. So r is going to equal to the square root of the x value is going to be 36.5. So you see how, here how the negative doesn't matter if you have ne negative 18. Eventually you'll just get a positive because we're taking parentheses squared, right? And we have the y value squared, which is 18 squared. And let me close this out. You can solve for r. And for r you should get around I got to be 40 40.697 megapascal 
So we just found R and all we did was use the Pythagorean theorem. And let me tell you something here that what we just did is the same as this. If you, if you actually look at it closely, this, what we just did, this value is our X value, right? That we looked at. And this value is our Y value. And that's how you can find R. Because sigma X minus sigma Y, all you do here is take sigma X, which is this, minus sigma Y, and you divide by 2. And what you're getting there is essentially that X value. And your Y value is just going to be your tau XY, which is what we have. So it's the same thing here, but I just did that graphically using the Morse circle. So we just found the R value, and now with this R value, we can finally arrive at these maximum and minimum principal stresses, the two non-zero stresses. So to go to step number three, the two non-zero stresses. So I'll do the sigma A is going to equal to what? the c plus r right so what's c c is just gonna be this it's just gonna be the 11.5 so it's just gonna be the negative 11.5 then what we do is add r because we know this is gonna be our r right so this was our r here for that triangle but it's the same as this r let me label this it's the same as this r and it's the same as this r and at the end, what we want to find is the maximum, sigma A and sigma B. So all we do here is take C, where we start, the center of the circle. We can add R to find sigma A. And then for sigma B, what we do is take the center of the circle, this value, the X coordinate. Then we subtract R to get the sigma B. So for sigma A, we take our C value, which is going to be the negative 11 0.5 and we add the R value of 40.697 megapascal. So sigma A should give us around, I got the 29, so you get positive 29.197 megapascal. And it makes sense, sigma A should be positive, it's on the right side, so it should be this value. So 29 point around 197 megapascal. Megapascal. And now let's find sigma B. Once again, you start at C and you subtract R to get sigma B. So sigma B, we start at C. Sigma B, lowercase b, is going to be negative 11.5 minus 40.6. 9, 7. So sigma B is going to equal to about negative 52.197 megapascal. So the, what we just found again on the circle is the sigma B. Negative 52.197 megapascal for sigma B. So these are the two non-zero principal stresses Sigma A and Sigma B, essentially these are our maximum stresses and we know what controls here. If we had to pick what controls, is it compression or tension? It has to be compression. It has to be the Sigma B. It's the greatest. So this is the greatest and we know compressive stresses are going to control because it's negative, right? This negative is, this value is greater than this value for the principal stresses. But we know when we compare that compressive stresses of negative control here. So sig, our correct answer should be here about D. That's our correct answer. These are the two non-zero principal stresses. But to finish this off, let me just quickly show you that you can actually draw the stress element and just use the calculator and the equations to solve for these. You'll get the same answers. So our stress element should look something like this. So we start with a square. The original stress element it's going to look something like this. It's an element that we're looking at. And we know we on the y-axis, we're going to have the sigma y. On the x-axis, we have sigma x. So we know based on this figure, these are plotted using the Morse circle. So we're working backwards here. We're trying to go from the Morse circle to our original stress element. 
So our stress element is pl plotted where? It's going to be plotted at point A and point B, right? That's where it's plotted. So at point A, we know that sigma x is going to be 25. And this is tau xy. But, but what's important here is this tau xy counterclockwise or clockwise? Obviously, it's counterclockwise, right? Because it's below. It's down here. So we're assuming tau counterclockwise is below the x-axis. So this is going to be counterclockwise. So when we actually draw it on our stress element, we have to draw it counterclockwise. Now let's do this one. This is sigma y and this is tau xy, the shear, but this tau xy is clockwise, right? clockwise and we know negative is going to be clockwise that's the assumption we make when we're doing these more circle questions or looking at stress transfer transformations here so we know that sigma x let's plot that sigma x is it positive yes positive 25 so positive is going to the right so we know we have sigma x is going to equal to 25 here megapascal this 25 is going to be the same as this one sigma x just 25 megapascal so we have that now and we know also that this 18 is counterclockwise so for this sigma x we have to draw arrows that are causing counterclockwise rotation meaning our arrows are gonna go up on this side it would go up this way and on this side it would go down this way this is tau xy how would how it would look on our element and we know obviously it's gonna be the counterclockwise rotation this way right counterclockwise so that's for that now let's just plot sigma y sigma y is negative 48 that means it goes into the stress element negative goes into so our sigma y is gonna look something like this sigma y equals negative 48 megapascal and we know this is also negative 48 negative 48 megapascals and now what we do here is we know focus on this tau xy it's in the above axis it's in the clockwise once again this is in your handbook clockwise is up counterclockwise is down right and they give us sigma y sigma x and tau right and so we can go back so we know this is clockwise so we have to draw clockwise rotation for sigma y. So what you do here clockwise, we have to go this way. This and this. So this is tau xy, right? Clockwise. Tau xy. So this way would cause a clockwise rotation, right? So that's why we drew this way and this way to cause a clockwise rotation. And this is, again a counterclockwise rotation right for sigma x so this is our original stress element the plane stress at a point and this is essentially graphed on the element but what we just did you can just take all of these values and essentially find what we just found using equations right so you can find your r value find the c value because we know this we know this we know tau xy then you could go back you can also find the two non-zero principal stresses by using this equation so you should at the end get the same answers and let me know if you do indeed get the same answers by using the equations for finding the principal stresses and i think they'll be all for this one but one last thing is that we know that this two angle essentially they use phi two angle phi here in the handbook they use phi if you go back it's two angle phi and this is going to be assuming that counterclockwise is positive and what's happening here is we know this two angle phi that they plot from this point and we go counterclockwise which is positive to this line essentially this line is our principal stress state right maximum Essentially, the two non-zero, this is the maximum in this case, and this is the minimum. This is positive, this is negative. And what we do here, this is where we start, right? This line is our original state, stress state, at a point. 
then what we do is based on this more circle why it's helpful is we can find this angle that we have to rotate in order to arrive at the maximum stress level so the worst case scenario the maximum stress level and we know this is two angle phi so this is two angle phi on the more circle so what this would look like essentially on the stress element just be careful here it would look it, it, you would have to rotate it and you would have to rotate it at that angle so it would look something like this and we know we're gonna have our principal stresses here these are are gonna be our principal stresses and we know that what we have essentially is an angle here and we know on this this is the important part on the stress element it's just phi but on the more circle it's going to be two phi this is this assumes the 90 degrees right so we're on the stress element we're essentially rotating by 90 here we're doubling the 90 so it's going to be 180 so on this on the stress element it's just phi on the more circle it's going to be two phi and we know these values for the maximum principal stresses is going to be 52.197 here which is this one so it's negative so this one as well 0.197 and this one is going to be this uh, the positive so it's 29.197 and this one is going to be 29.197 so these are the principal stress states and the specific angle that we have to rotate in order to arrive at these maximum and minimum principal stresses. So that's why that's important. Just remember, phi on the stress element is two times on the Mars circle to get to there. And we're assuming counterclockwise this way is going to be positive. So that's all for this video. So it was a long video, but... I hope this helps you and covers everything related to more circle for your FE exam. So please subscribe and like and take care.